guys, this is Kat Bambini, Peace Punk Production. Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to be here with you today. This is my favorite part of the day. Well, one of them. My other favorite parts of the day are usually writing poetry or lip syncing. Anybody who follows my Instagram account has seen some of the madness that occurs as I try to find the best of the bunch when I come up with poetry and lip syncing videos. And they've endured that, so I'm very grateful for that outlet because it has saved my life, to be honest. But that's just some shop talk here. And I just wanna welcome you and feel like nervous because I just know people are actually paying attention now. I did a lot of videos for many months and I'm really glad that nobody was paying attention, <laughs> just a couple people, because it was a doozy. It was, oh my God, I just, I just fell on my face in public and I learned everything the hard way. It was just like I've done my entire life. I was born stubborn. <laughs> I was born stubborn <laughs> and it's been a hard trait to let go of and so um, educating about narcissism came out of a stubborn desire to have peace in my community in spite of nobody wanting to cooperate with me on the way that I was seeing peace which was things needed to change and I needed to stop being abused and when I started pointing out the problem there was a lot of gaslighting and so I had to take to the public like I've done in the past as a journalist, like I've done in the past as a beat poet, uh, confessional poet. It just came naturally and it was probably, it could have been a total disaster had love, which is God to me, not been looking out for me because none of this have I been able to do on my own. This is not my own. This comes from somewhere else and this comes from you guys. It's a synergistic thing. And I am so grateful for it right now because you're helping me, actually, probably more than I'm helping you. I hope I'm helping you more than you're helping me. <laughs> I would hope so. So I am a person who, people who have been watching this know, suffered from severe narcissistic abuse most of my life. I don't think they knew it was most of my life, but very, very severe um, narcissistic abuse. And today I want to talk about healing from narcissistic abuse for empaths because I imagine that there's a lot of empaths watching this channel and there's a lot of healers and helpers and people that just want to give who are very worried about the narcissist <laughs> and that's the problem I'm going to try to call out is that the worry about the narcissist and ask me how I know <laughs> is what keeps you stuck in the cycle and so if you really want to heal the first thing you need to do is disconnect from the narcissist. I know it seems impossible, but they have a line in. They're in your psyche. And so once they've been allowed in your psyche and they're taking up that much thought space, it's not a matter of simply removing yourself from the situation. Although for those of you in the very beginning who are still in the situation, working with one or has one in your family or at your church or your community, uh, it depends on the level of danger. You can manage it if it's not something you have to deal with every day. If you're in a relationship with one and you're being abused, I would highly recommend getting out and calling a domestic violence organization because your life is not worth sacrificing. A couple thousand dollars is not worth sacrificing your life for. Ask me how I knew I did not have the money to leave. And that was my biggest excuse a lot of the time. Every time things happen, I was like, I need money, I need money, I need money. And that's always what I put first instead of myself until I died. I had a near death and I dragged myself back through it without telling very many people about it. I was uh, scoffed at by some people in my life and I had asked for help, they didn't show up. And that's when I knew that I was in a situation but it took me a number of months to really get out. I was still trying to make it work. I was still listening to words, a lot of words. Once I cut off the words and stopped listening to the words um, I found that any word from somebody who is narcissistic would be hurtful and, and get into my psyche, whether it's through text or email. I can even feel I am a psychic, and I think everybody is. I think we're all connected as a human species, so it's not anything that mystical. It's just some people have it more developed. I've had it more developed since I was little, and it's been a huge problem in my life. I'm sure that a lot of empaths have this issue too, where you sense things, you feel things, and a lot of people tell you that you're crazy because you're sensing and feeling things that they don't sense and feel. And so I just wanna say that you're not crazy. Trust yourself. 
Although if you do have a disorder of mental illness, do treat that because you know I do have post-traumatic stress disorder myself and that has interfered a lot of times with my abilities. And so you have to learn a lot about you know what is your own ego and what is actually coming from other people and that's very very deep work that I'm sure a lot of you that are doing that already know and so I'm not going to talk about that too much but when you do leave there's a lot of steps that have to happen first of all and so I'll just tell you a little bit about my journey um, you know I got out of a situation I was pretty much dragged out and by you know two people and I just got in a situation where people didn't have my best interests at mind. They saw me as a, a new opportunity to manipulate. And so once I got out of my situation, I had to make sure that I just didn't spend any time around anybody, actually. I really went hermit mode. And it's not highly recommended, but for me it was necessary. And I had a counselor who I trusted from a domestic violence organization. And then I gradually, once I was done with that, um, I did a couple things for myself, like I didn't have a home, <laughs> so I went on a trip and I hung out with my mom, who I wasn't very close to, we got closer and um, it, it was very hard. I was very, very sick and a lot of people thought that I was doing drugs, like they thought I was just a drug addict or something because I looked emaciated, I was, nobody had seen anything like it, I don't think, and I took to the social media to try to argue my case and I thought everybody would come to my side and I thought that the people involved in the abuse would change because I thought that they were good people who had empathy who desired to change who didn't want to hurt me now that wasn't true and that is the hardest part for me that is what really took the discipline to figure out and so I kept having all of the opportunities handed to me. I had a six-figure job interview. I was helped by a local organization, Dress for Success in San Francisco, who got me a new suit. Uh, they gave me a new suit. They have a uh, resource that gives women, you know, clothing for interviews. And they walked me through everything and I showed up and I would have aced it. I'm pretty sure I would have gotten that job, but I started talking with the people who had been abusive in my life before. And the life was sucked out of me. Every time I got life in me, I didn't know how to protect myself. I didn't know how to clear my chakras or my aura had a lot of leaks in it. Um, and I could feel it. It's just people were allowed in to my bubble. We all have a bubble around us that protects us. And for some of us, we may have leaks or weakness. For some of you who don't believe in that woo-woo stuff, just look at it like you may have poor boundaries. <laughs> You could just look at it like that if that's hard for you to, to talk about. And I'm sure I have a very mixed crowd here of scientific people, very mystical people, you know, psychics, artists. There's a number of people who watch this. And so I speak to all of you because I have a little of all of you in me, basically, uh, in that I'm scientific, but I am woo woo. <laughs> and, you know, so as you get to know me, you'll, you'll find that I'm dynamic. And that may be hard for some people to handle. I say that up front because I just want you to know that now. And it just means that there's a lot of variety in my conversation and style. And I encourage that in you because humans are dynamic. We're not just one thing. You're not just a business person or a nurse or a doctor or you know, a wife or a daughter or a teenager or a child or whatever, right? So I do wanna make these a little more kid friendly. So I'm gonna watch my language. And um, I do want teenagers to be able to watch them. So. I know teenagers cuss, um, but I just really want to be a better example for people who are learning about this at a young age who could maybe prevent it early. If I had learned this when I was younger, I, there's a lot of things that I was a very strong person with a very high education level already when I was in elementary school and I was gifted and for some reason I just never wanted to hang out with the gifted kids. I wanted to hang out with the cool kids and I just always got myself into trouble because I didn't have high self-esteem. I had a very low self-esteem. I was a latchkey kid. And my parents were working their asses off to try to support us in the Bay Area. My dad's an artist. Uh, he's a concert pianist. And it was very difficult. And so I was alone a lot. And that's kind of how I grew up. That's how I learned to be. And I don't know if I'm an introvert for so much as I just learned to be alone and to value being alone because I like being around people. So I'm telling you a little about myself so that you know a little bit about me, like why 
I am talking about this and why I am suited to talk to you about this because I'm sure that new people are wondering, maybe people who are coming along are wondering, they're like, what, you know, I just want you to know and feel comfortable and safe. And so as long as you feel comfortable and safe, you know, stay here and listen. If you don't leave right now, I mean, seriously, if something in your gut is off, something's weird, go elsewhere because I will never encourage you to hang out when it's not safe for you, okay? Um, as far as when you have left, um, for me, I tried to make it look like everything was together on my social, and I think that really hurt me. And then I just fell apart in public. You know, I had family, you know, from both sides watching me. I had people just watching the fall, and nobody knew what to say or do. There were rumors and lies going around about me. I didn't know about this, and so I was just going there in public, like this journalist, kind of like, this is what happened, let's fix it at a societal level. And I had no idea how to do it, how to tackle it. I had studied strategy. I had worked in as a liaison in a legal firm, in, at a, you know, in education as a liaison between departments, as an editor, uh, you know, talking to all different departments about all different things. I had always been like the go-between, the customer facing, or, or just somebody who was always dealing with the public. And um, I don't know why I said that, I just got lost. Sometimes I will start to describe and lose my train of thought. So um, too much emotion there, I guess. It's, it's, I ha I've had a very hard work most of my life of being a liaison or a customer service person because I had a pretty face according to my employers. And so they wanted to put me in the public eye, which I didn't mind, but it got very hard for me because I have a lot of other skills and I'm a writer and so eventually I learned to be a, a writer full time and made my trade and career doing writing. And so I write poetry now um, and that's what I write. <laughs> but I was writing business, you know, writing for business and right now I'm, you know, studying copywriting. So, you know, there's ways you have to make money. So as an artist, I've made money through business writing or editing or working with a college or whatever it is, I'll do it, you know, as long as it's ethical and in line with my values. And so I worked at a college that was very social justice oriented and that's where I got really into inclusion and diversity, which is what I try to talk about with Peace Bond Production on the topic of narcissism because narcissism affects everybody and narcissists are power abusers and so they are <laughs> interfering with your equality. And that's not cool to me. I just, I'm, since I'm an empath and I call it a helper just because I like to help people and my biggest beef with narcissists was that they would tell me that I was selfish when I was sitting there giving them all of my energy and chi and time, almost 24 seven, thinking about them, what they need, what they want, trying to give them what they need and them saying I wasn't giving enough. So that's my biggest beef with narcissists. I still have a beef like that with narcissists. I have had many, many of them take all of my energy and time and then go around telling me that I was selfish and didn't give them anything. And just to be able to say that out loud has taken a lot of healing because I was too afraid of them. They were bullies. I had bullies as friends and lovers. They were bullies. And I was a bully too. I was a bully back because I would go silent or, you know, deal with it in my own way, you know, with friends who were not treating me well. I would just disappear. It's the only way I knew how to deal with people who were acting narcissistically, which is okay. But it caused a lot of grief for me because I was guilty. I felt guilty and they made me feel guilty. And so a lot of what you're going to deal with when you leave is that power play of the emotional. It's a lot of emotional weight. And so if you're trying to hold a full-time job and do all that stuff while you're leaving, you know, it might be good for you actually to keep in doing something. But for me, I could not function. I was so ill and I had uh, agoraphobia. I had OCD, uh, and then my existing condition was exacerbated, so I was diagnosed with PTSD officially um, by my doctor, and then I had to go on leave, and it was awful. I don't want to talk about it very much. The only reason I'm mentioning it is to make you feel less alone if you're dealing with that, and I don't want to give that information out to anybody else watching because it's just, you know, it helps them to tear me down, and that's been the case. It's just a lot of energy work to try to keep shitty people from stealing light and keeping me from sharing it. But once you get good at doing that, if you adopt a self-care routine, it took me a long time to adopt, but I'm still working on it. You know, sometimes I'm a night owl, sometimes I'm a day person, you know, and I, I'm still a little erratic with sleeping because I get scared with this pandemic and everything else. So I'm sure a lot of you are dealing with that now. It's very hard to have a self-care routine. So I would say just be very gentle with yourself and 
be very congratulatory when you can do a basic routine. That's what I've been doing, like I'm a, a child basically, like I'm like, good job, you got up early, <laughs> good job you did your yoga, it, you did a couple stretches you didn't do, that's fine. It used to be the kind of person, and this is how I would attract narcissists too, who would beat myself up, you didn't do your full yin yoga. And it's like a whole hour sequence usually, twice a day that I demand of myself. And lately I'm like, you did a couple stretches, <laughs> you did it once, great. And then that encourages more of the same just as if you're dealing with a child. So if you're dealing with a child, you don't yell at them when they don't do the whole thing or they have a problem getting through it. You kind of look at what is the deal, what's going on. And so I try to look at myself like that. And this is good advice for you if you're dealing with the narcissistic abuse. And you're probably wondering why am I talking about you and your self-care when it's the narcissist? If he would just change or she would just change, I'd get better. Well, I'm here to tell you that it took me a year and a half to realize that I need to change. And I was changing already. I was seeing a therapist and I was doing all that. I was trying to fix everything, every single way I could. Couples counseling, you know, anything I could do, I did. I was out there doing it, front lines, getting an MBA, working full time, going to counseling, doing music, doing writing, and I died. <laughs> Basically. It was too much. And so now what I try to tell myself, and I'm, you know, I'm getting into the workaholic mode with these videos because I just really enjoy giving them to you guys and being seen for who I am and being heard and being able to share and that's just how I operate and this is the one thing that narcissists don't want me to do. They don't want me to share and heal and give myself to other people because they want me all for themselves and so most of my life I was kept hostage by narcissistic people who were very possessive of me and I thought that this was flattering. I thought it was flattering that they liked to dress me up. I thought it was flattering that they liked to tell me what to do. You know, and at some point I had I had a lover comment once on it. He's like, your girlfriends are very bossy. They're very, I'm like, yeah, I know. It's kind of cute though. I thought it was cute until I said no or didn't give them what they wanted. And then they gossiped and they weren't there for me. So it's a real indicator when you pull away and you don't offer the same amount of attention, love, energy, because I was the only one reaching out with many of these a lot of the time. And they were the ones that started the friendship a lot of the time. So. It was a guilt thing. And I had to really look at that and say, do I really like this person ruthlessly? You have to be ruthless. And don't worry about what people are gonna say. People have called me everything, everything, everything. Fortunately, I haven't heard it. I just feel it because I'm psychic and I know, and I just feel the energy, I just know. I mean, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, it's just in your head because you have PTSD. It's like, dude, I know my people and I know when they're off, you know, and I'm still connected. It's not like you can just break those bonds and just, Oof, we're done. Never again will I ever see that person. It's like you're still connected and you're still gonna be connected, but you don't have to have cords in you, basically. Like you get attached with cords, you know, parents to children, lovers to lovers, anybody you've ever loved. I don't, there's a word for it in India, um, but it's basically your body memory of whoever you've had interactions with and it leaves a residue, especially sexual interactions. And so if you distance yourself, there's so much work that has to happen after that too. And I, I do recommend Melanie Tonia Evans if you're starting out because she does have a couple of visualizing exercises that will help you to release the trauma in your own body and learn not to fear the narcissist because the fear is what keeps you going back. And it's, this is such a complex topic actually now that I'm talking about it with you. It's so complex how many things you need to do to heal. So I'd highly recommend her. She has a million videos. She can really get you through those beginning stages. And then for the rest of you who've kind of gotten through that and you're trying to like establish a self-care routine, I'm just kind of sharing with you what I'm learning as I go. Just, I used to be very, very regimented. I was like super regimented and I was super, I'm an editor. <laughs> so I was just regimented, very much like I wrote my list of tasks, tasks every day um, at work. You know, I, I had meetings with my boss almost every day. You know, it's just like, very, very regimented about what I did and had a very scheduled life, like, you know, getting up, doing yoga, going to work. Um, on my lunch break, I would go on a walk or, you know, whatever, and I'd come home, I'd go to dance class. I used to go dance at a dance studio for about four years in Oakland, and then I'd go home. And my life was just like that for a long, long time, and it just really, you know, it's how people live here in the Bay Area. It's, it's impossible, it's, it's impossible. People are breaking, you know, 
you can't do that for very long. That's why I think a lot of people come here temporarily and then they leave because they're just kind of coming to make some money and then leave. It's always been like a wild west kind of town, San Francisco. Uh, but my family goes back four generations here and so I feel very rooted in this area and it's been very healing for me. This is the third time that I've moved back here um, to heal. And so your geography is very important. And it wasn't necessarily a choice, I just got dragged out and then it happened to be like I was safer than going back and I had to find something, I had to make it work. And it was like six of one, half dozen of the other. Um, but as a single woman, you know, it seemed safer. And it just, it worked out. So, having my morning coffee, I've been up since five, but it's, it's noon and I just made my coffee. I've just been working. Uh, some meditation to clear myself out, basically. It's just, there's a lot of meditations that you can listen to that can help you to heal and buffer yourself. Uh, I can recommend so many on YouTube. Quadable Integrity is one, I love them. Dr. Virtual is one for the more intense people who like the whole matrix kind of thing. He's really fun, I love his videos so much. There's one that I listen to every day. Actually, there's three that I listen to every day, especially after I do healing work. And then a lot of other ones that I'll find just intuitively, whether it's you know, binaural, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I always say it, I think, that way, and um, binaural recordings, which are just one tone that can help you heal, like I have had a lot of health issues, especially since I left the situations I was in, I was so, so sick, and I looked so, so sick, and it was so devastating to be called a drug addict when I was actually physically ill from abuse and healing and recovering from that, and narcissistic abuse is very specific it's very, very hard to recover from. I don't understand why myself. The science from what I've heard is that you're, it's peptides and you know, hormones and those are going up and down. But for me, it just feels like it's a psychic vampire sucking out your life if you're not doing what I'm doing, which is blocking yourself by doing lots of work. And me saying this in public is very dangerous because I know that the narcissists that were in my life could watch this and do. So I'm just doing that uh, because there's nowhere to hide from me anymore. I can't hide anywhere. I live in a very small Bay Area. <laughs> so this is why I do this. It's not because I'm a prima donna. It's not because I love it as much as you think, uh, although I do love it. I really enjoy it so much that I don't know why I never did this earlier. I was too afraid of putting myself out there because I always got put down and told I was making mistakes. And if I made a mistake, it was the end of the world. I was in bands and we were very hard on ourselves, even though we were punk and we didn't play our music. You can find it online on Kirsten Bean. But um, you know, it's, it's the best I could do with what I had and I'm proud of it. But, uh, and it's loud and heavy and we had fun. So my bandmates were very hard on themselves and they always put themselves down and it's like, we worked really hard when we did work. Uh, and then we had the ghost ship fires here and, and a lot of studios shut down and we lost our practice space and we lost that outlet. So a lot of that, it's a big bummer for me still. It's many years later, but it's a big bummer for me. I still wanna cry when I talk about it. So I'm not gonna talk about it because I definitely believe in positive thinking and I believe that you get what you think about and talk about. And if you focus too much on the past and all the shit that's happening, believe me, I have, uh, <laughs> CPTSD, which is complex PTSD, and I have spent my entire life trying to find out what happened and dig it up and go over and over and over again, ruminating all this. None of that stuff has healed me. It got me to the point where I could realize what was wrong so I could heal and explain it to other people. And I will never overlook that work. That work is very important. You spend as long as you can figuring it out so that you can explain it, talk about it, get the help you need. Don't worry about it. Don't be so hard on yourself nothing's gonna be perfect. Everything's gonna be a mess for a while. Just remember, if you have good people in your corner, hang on to those and focus on those people because the mistakes I made were to focus on the narcissists or the people in my life who were acting narcissistically, the people that were hurting me, I focused on them when I left. Still, in my head, in my heart, trying to fix it. I did everything I could to try to fix it. every single thing and I still do things. I, I can't give up, I'm loyal to the bone. You would have to murder me 
And so I even changed my name so that I could start a new slate and start to stop being so loyal to people who were not doing anything for me. But saying that I was doing nothing for them when I was doing everything. So it makes me very sad because that's my truth. And you're going to have to deal with that. There's going to be a lot of that stuff where everything that you thought was sacred, your loyalty, your integrity, your truth, it will be questioned, put down. And if you have the, the kind of situation I had, um, especially if you've been in the public eye and people can kind of call you names and, and think that you're, because I was standoffish, because I was protecting myself, they, they just really didn't know me. And so I've let people get to know me, which has been a benefit, but it's been very hard because there is a lot of judgment and shaming that goes on when you break away from the crowd. There's a lot. People get scared and then they don't want to see it. They don't want to see it because they're going to have to look at it in their own lives. So you're just pointing out something that they don't want to know. Think about it that way and be a little compassionate to the people that you're sharing it with. I was not compassionate. I don't think that those people needed to know everything that I told them, but I was very scared and I was very lonely and I didn't know who to talk to and I was crazy. I, I had lost my mind because I died and I can't stress that enough that I had a near death and brought myself back and made myself go to work, you know, called anybody I could to get through it that was a professional and, and had to work through it, called family, whoever I could, didn't tell them the whole story because I didn't really register it myself. I was having cognitive dissonance where you split and you don't remember the abuse so that you can survive. And so there is an integration that has to happen if you've done that. And part of leaving before you leave is to acknowledge the abuse and accept it and then leave but you know you know if you're educated on your body and what you need and your health and you know you know you're being abused you know something's wrong that's why you're here so you're doing a good thing for yourself it may not seem like it but you are so I just want to say that and um I seem a little sad today I am it's been a hard pandemic and I don't normally feel sad but I'm I'm just tired and I I really do miss sometimes some of the things about those people um that that I loved so it's it's really a hard all or none to do no contact or cut people off and it's really hard for me to do I'm very loyal I'm very about community four generations in the same area it's not in my nature to just cut off and these people know that and so they milk it and they always come back around and uh, I have to be like, what's in it for me? A lot of times there's nothing in it for me, just guilt, shame, guilt and shame. And then people putting me down and gossiping about me no matter what. A lot of times I was afraid if I didn't do what they said, they would gossip about me and they did anyway. So really I shouldn't have worried at all because people are going to gossip no matter what. I did make a video about narcissism and gossip. There's so much more I want to say about this. I could talk for an hour seriously about what you need to do to heal when you leave and I think this was really just to share with you a little bit about my experience and, and give you a little precursor to that so that hopefully the universe will protect me from being hurt by giving you personal information because <laughs> I've been doing it all along and it's somehow I've survived but it's been hard and uh, you guys have made it easier so thank you I know you're silent that's fine you're, I know you're here, I feel you, and I feel grounded by your energy. As, as troubled as you feel right now, you're grounding by being here. So know that you have a very calming presence. Whoever I'm talking to, you really do. <laughs> or I wouldn't be able to do this work. It'd be too hard for me, too sensitive. So yeah, get your coffee, take care of yourself. Get some space, you know. If you have any particular questions, let me know. Right now I'm just trying to be a constant support to you and to talk about things that you might be struggling with and I'm trying to remember back to some of the stuff that I wanna delete from my mind. But the thing is I wrote about it every day on my social media for a year and a half. I just, I started writing daily poetry about a year ago because I was scared for my life. And um, I took a lot of it down because it was hurtful to people and I didn't remember sometimes what I was saying because I was in panic, I was in shock and I kept getting hurt again, I couldn't understand it. 
I was a dumbass little deer getting eaten by, you know, lions. And I was like trying to make friends with the lions. And that's the kind of person that I am. I'm like, hey, lions, you want to be my buddy? I know that you're just a lion, but like, you're not going to, you're not going to hurt me. You know, I'm just that stupid. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you a little bit to not be so stupid <sighs> because I've been so stupid and I should know better by now. But anyways, peace to you, stay calm, keep calm, carry on, do not let this get to you, breathe, keep your inner center, whatever you need to do, man, and you're not going to be perfect, they're always going to put you down, you're never going to do enough for them, so just forget about it, they're always going to be happy, that was the main thing that really got me out, was they're never going to be happy no matter what I do, and everything I did was worthless, because it wasn't enough, and then once I left, they told people all sorts of stuff that wasn't true, and I, I can admit that I left in a pretty shitty way. I was told to. Told to leave when you're being abused and it's at the level that it was for me and had been going on for so long and you've died. It's a good it's a good recommendation to leave. So I didn't do anything wrong. And neither are you in taking care of yourself. So just remember that. Okay. Just remember that as you go through your day and I think I'm gonna take care of myself now because I have to do some household stuff. You know, your basics, like your laundry, your dishes. Like these are things that were very hard for me in the beginning. I was like, sometimes like wrangling my dishes was like the end of the world. I just didn't know what to do. And I had these fruit flies that would like show up, San Francisco's fruit flies, and they would be like, hey, you, we are here. And I'd be like, I don't know how to get rid of you now. And you're trying to tell me that I'm messy and I just don't know what to do. I was just like, everything would make me fall apart. So now I'm like super happy and this is from a person like I said who was very regimented But I you know this stuff breaks you it breaks you they will break your soul Their only goal is to just go down to the core and break you because they don't want you to be you. I Don't know why this is some people say it's Satan <laughs> But I don't think Satan's a bad guy. I think he's just a fallen angel, you know, that wanted to hang out uh, So people are blaming Satan a lot it's like blaming Jesus for everything, you know, it's like, whatever, dude. They're just archetypes. And you can call on them if you want. It's not the end of the world. I listen to metal. I don't have a problem with it. I love rock and roll. So, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I really, <laughs> anyways, getting punchy here. I don't ever want to leave you guys. I just, I, it's so weird to me. I just, it's like I'm feeling the vibe of what you need and you need somebody to be there with you and I'm like here so I never want to leave but it's like it's been a half an hour so I'm like Kirsten or Kat you have to turn this off now and take care of yourself so I'm gonna do that and advocate that I take care of myself a little bit here and stop helping other people so much get my energy resources back and then maybe I'll post this maybe I won't but I'll have another jam for you soon don't worry <laughs> Take it easy. Be nice to each other. Be nice to yourself. Be nice to the narcissist. You always want to be the better person. I'll leave you with this. I remember there was a point where I wasn't going to pay something. And, and I talked to my mom. I was like, I'm going to pay. And I was like, she's like, you want to act like the person that you are. The kind of person that you are. Be who you are. Act with dignity. So I did. Of course, it wasn't acknowledged. But I knew. So be your best self and bring out their best self. Because if you are being your best self, they have no excuse. But if you're not, they have every excuse. And it's not your fault. You're not going to be able to control it. Don't even get that idea in your head. You cannot control their abuse. But you can remove yourself from the situation and you can set boundaries with legal help, with allies, with community, depending on how much people know about the issue. I had a really hard time convincing people what was going on and getting them to help me in the way that I needed help except for organizations, and they can only help you, that was perfect, so. um, they can only help you to a certain point, so know that, there's a gap, I'll help you a certain point, and then you'll need more help, so if you have family resources, anything, you'll need those, and be gentle with yourself, do not demand the most of yourself, because your body is going to be racked, just trying to get that psychic connection out, you know, and not think about them, not feel guilty, your whole life has been about them for how long? I bet some of you it's like 14, 15, 16 years, right? So it takes some time. And for you earlier ones, still, it doesn't matter. It's still hard, 
right? So just be patient, be gentle with yourself. You're not alone. Lots of people love you. You're supported by a great loving universe from what I've learned, actually. I've had the most terrible things happen to me, but when I look back, sometimes I think there are things I could have done different and that the world is more loving than I thought. So hopefully you can hear me. I'm a little quiet today. You know, I have thin walls and someday I hope we'll have a studio where I can just, you know, not have to worry about the neighbors and stuff like that. But you know, whatever, just do what you can, man. Start where you are, you know. If nobody knows about it in your community, educate. All about the grassroots. Start where you are. You can make the difference in your community. You can.